morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, it's a little bit dreary. Uh, I'm a little low energy, so I'm working on that. I'm actually kind of in the midst of, not kind of, I am in the midst of an autoimmune flare-up, but we are on the tail end of it. I'm feeling much better today than I have the last several days. But, you know, after several days of feeling fairly unwell, um, I decided that today was going to be my turning point day. Hopefully, we'll not live to regret that. But I put some makeup on, got dressed, um, and we're just going to give it our best shot. So I'm really glad that you're here. So um, my goals for today with this space are to uh, start to move winter, although here in Atlanta we have another huge cold spell coming, but it's just for a few days. So I think I'm safe to start to slowly move winter clothing out, and we're going to start pulling out pieces that we want to have be for the spring. I don't really do like a capsule wardrobe, but I do like to have an idea of what I want to wear, what I kind of want my wardrobe to look like. And then what I generally do is I put like my most worn clothes will go right here and that's what I'll pull from on a daily basis. I didn't do such a great job with that this winter. So we're going to assess that situation. Maybe look at some things that I might sell. Um, I've done some selling recently on Poshmark, had great luck with that. So yeah, let's just see what happens. Before I can even begin to tackle any of that, I need to go downstairs and fix myself a decent breakfast. Um, one of the things that when my autoimmune disease is bad, I tend to really neglect my nutrition because I just don't feel like cooking for myself. So I'm determined today um, to do a better job nutrition wise. So, oh, let's check in with doggies. Good morning, Sadie. How are you? How are you, love? Hello, good morning. And Scooby's here and he's good. Lenny, where are you? Let's find Lenny. Oh, here he comes. He heard me. Hi, baby. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, guys. Let's make some breakfast. Should we? Let's do it. It's so dreary outside, but if you look over there, you can see that all of my um, bulbs are starting to come up. I have some really beautiful flowers that will come up there, a few tulips, um, some crocus, I think, come up over there. I am really bad at knowing the names of flowers, and they're not actually up right now, so I don't remember what they look like. They're yellow, I know that, and all of Scooby's balls are out there. I need to clean that up, but yeah, kind of a dreary day. It is fun, though. Um, we live this, all of that land is ours back there to that second fence that you see, but when the leaves start to come in, I love it. It's kind of like the great greening and it's definitely starting to feel more like spring. All right, I've brought you into the dining room for us to have breakfast. I opened the blinds when it's dreary like this. I'm trying to get as much light in the house as possible. So I've got my two eggs, a bowl full of beautiful fruit, some wheat toast, uh, jam for my toast and we're gonna enjoy this gorgeous breakfast. I already took my vitamins So yeah, let's get the nutrition train on the tracks. Okay, nutritious breakfast check and check Anyway, I, I do the best I can Normally, I'm really good about nutrition. We're gonna own the dishwasher now <laughs> um, Oh, by the way Lenny is very overweight and he is starving all the time. Now my friend, ouch, as I run into the dishwasher, my friend Sarah said, maybe he's just naturally thick. And I appreciate that very much because, you know, your girl appreciates that, natural body types and all of the things. But obviously we want him to be healthy. So we were at the vet a few days ago and we did a, a thyroid check on him. And I am waiting, I, we'll get the results today, I have cut back on his diet. He is now getting green beans as a substitute for like a third of his food to hopefully help fill him up. But he begs for food all day, every day. And I don't, I, I feel terrible. I don't know how to help him. So I'm kind of torn because his sister Sadie, uh, Sadie and Lenny were litter mates. We adopted them, adopted them both together um, last year. They're six years old, they're gonna be seven soon. Um, she has thyroid problems, so the odds are fairly good that he might have them, but I'm torn because I don't want him to have to be on medication for the rest of his life, but at the same time, he's really hungry all the time. Now, 
Sadie was 115 pounds when we got her and she's now down to 90 pounds. So she's definitely, the medication's working. She's down to her fighting weight. We'll see what happens with our friend over here. But yeah, right now he's a little ticked at me because I am refusing to give him a bone. is clean-ish. Um, I have a mess on the kitchen table that I could deal with now, but I'm not going to. We are going to head up to my closet and start to at least sort through, if not clean out. I'm trying to set realistic expectations for what might actually get accomplished, so let's head in there and see what happens. Okay, so the first step in this kind of resetting my closet for spring is um, just putting crap away. Just things have just, things are not where they belong. So we're going to put everything back in its home. I've got some clean laundry I need to put away. I won't bore you with that part of things. So let me get this done and I'll come back when it's actually time to do the fun part, which it, well, is it fun? I think it's fun, uh, which is to go through what I have right now, see what needs to be edited out. What can I sell? What can I get rid of? And I definitely need to make some room for the new pieces that are coming in. So, all right, so we're making progress, but I wanted to show you guys, this is one of the new pieces I've picked up for spring. It is from Draper James, and it is this absolutely beautiful t-shirt, uh, uh, dress. It's like a knit jersey. It is so comfortable on and I know I'm going to get a ton of wear out of this. I'll be wearing it um, at Disney in a couple weeks. It looks super cute with a layer over it, either a light sweater, my jean jacket, and I will definitely be wearing them with like my Kari Yumas. I could also wear it with um, sandals and yeah it's just a super cute dress when i tried it on for scott and i haven't even worn it yet it still has the tags on but scott said it made me look like sophia loren so i am all about that that makes me really happy so in that same order from draper james i ordered this beautiful sweater i'm gonna pop this on to show you how cute it is because this has become i i have already worn it like four times and i absolutely love it so hold on Okay, obviously I would not wear it with these little joggers that I have on. I mean, although you could, but it's kind of, it's not a cropped length, but it's definitely not like super long. And it, it has, my favorite detail about it is these sleeves because they're a little bit of, I can't remember what this kind of sleeve is called, not dolman, but there's another word for it when they're just a little flounced at the bottom. The neckline, I love this v-neck it's got a zipper you could do it you could you know kind of notch the collar like that if that was your vibe um i really like it down um but you guys this sweater it's so soft i can't even express so i think this will be perfect we have a trip to newport beach california coming up it will be early summer. The evenings can still be coolish. I think this will be great in Japan. I'm going to Japan in April. And then in June, I have a cruise to Greece. And I feel like this just screams Greece, right? Maybe not. It's the blue and white thing. Maybe that's too much. Like, is that too, like, themed to wear blue and white in Greece? I feel like, no, it isn't. <laughs> anyway, I love this. I will link it below. Um, you guys know blue and white is kind of my thing. I have way too much blue and white, but that's okay because it makes me happy. So you get to wear what makes you happy because that's what being a grown up is about. Also, I thought I would show you like up close so you can see it's almost got a chenille feel to it. Um, it has a little bit of acrylic, but not a lot. I can't wear things that are all acrylic, um, but I love where the shoulder hits and the it's just... It almost feels like velour. It's that soft and it just feels a little bit, um, so it's as comfortable as a sweatshirt, but it feel, or I feel like it feels like a sweatshirt, but it looks a lot more elevated than that, which is, that is my vibe. Comfortable as a sweatshirt, but looks like I tried. That's kind of the vibe I'm going for all the time. 
Okay, so this is where uh, my closet is absurdly large. I'm aware. I have had tiny, tiny closets in houses. This house has a huge closet for me. But this rack right here is where I generally keep the things that I'm wearing right now um, that are in season, that I'm loving, that are just like in regular rotation. So as I go through here, obviously this dress is going to stay because I hope to wear this a lot this spring. Um, this little white t-shirt from J. Jill Fit. Um, if you guys don't know, for quality t-shirts that fit um, your body well, J. Jill, amazing, amazing quality. When I was a manager for the container store um, and I went through my management training, there was actually someone who used to work for J. Jill and she didn't even work for the company anymore and she still went into great detail with me about how high quality their um, t-shirts are. So I always get my t-shirts from them. You can usually get them on sale, so shop around for a coupon code. But this is definitely one of my basics for this spring. Um, this is my newest dress from Karen Kane. Um, this dress i wore it in mexico i adore this dress um, it is going to be worn a lot this spring it is a dress that is relatively um, casual i talked about it on instagram i'm not going to do a big try on of it right now but if you guys have not ever worn karen kane dresses I think they're really high quality. They're priced well. You can get them from Nordstrom. And this one is just so pretty and current. And again, really, really comfortable and practical to wear, but it feels like I tried. So there you go. This dress, which has been a heavy hitter, this is probably the third spring I will be wearing this dress. It will go to everywhere from Costco to the grocery store to Disney with me. So that is staying. This is a um, linen shirt that for sure is staying. It is Future Collective. Got it from Target. Um, I just washed it. And I what I normally do with my linen shirts is I will give them a quick iron, um, not too fussy about it, and then just let them be what they are, especially when I wear them for travel. Um, but I wore this in Mexico as a bathing, bathing suit cover-up. I wore it with nicer pants. Love that shirt. So that's going in the spring rotation. This jacket is time to be retired. I'm not going to throw it away because it has a lot of memories, but it is missing buttons. It is starting to actually get holes. I realize it's vintage, but it is not going to be in the major rotation anymore. I may live to regret that. It's not going to be far. I'm just going to put it over on the other side of the closet. <laughs> Please do not laugh at me right now. Um, vulnerable moment. Literally everything that I have put out that I want to wear for this spring, and this should not be there because that is a really cute bathing suit cover up, but that should go in just with stuff that I take for trips. Um, everything is blue and white with the exception of this one little pink shirt. So I could think a couple of things here. It is okay that blue and white is like my signature look. It's what I'm happy in. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. However, I do think I should, this one is pink. This is just a little silk t-shirt. I do think I should rethink next time I go to buy something new if blue and white is necessarily the way that we want to go um, or do we want to maybe do something else. I wanted to show y'all, we've talked about um, sweater storage before, particularly cashmere. Um, I have these little cedar rings on my hangers and they protect the sweaters from moths. Now, a few of these sweaters will go in my trunk with a cedar block for the winter, but a lot of them are perfect in the springtime. They're lighter color. I've talked to you guys about why I love cashmere so much because it's so breathable. Some of them are a little on the thicker side like this one and will probably be put away until the fall. Um, but yeah, they are all hung together. And I know that a lot of people say you should not hang sweaters. Um, I do take great care to hang them in a way that they won't stretch. Um, but this is how I prefer um, to store them. So the sweaters are all happily together. Also, you may have noticed I was very light on pants. This is mostly um, 
you know, tops and then dresses. Um, and so you're like, what are you wearing on the bottom? Well, I have ordered some new pants. I of course have my jeans, which are folded in another part of my closet. And then I love these uh, J. Jill wherever pants. Um, I have them in several colors. These are not those, these are the ones from Volcom. Um, but they're super, like they're a good weight and they're comfortable, but they don't read like, um, so weird sheen showing up on camera that's not there in real life. Um, the dog hair, however, is there in real life. That is part of it. And I'm going to show you what I'm looking at so you know why there's dog hair on my pants. Hold on. <laughs> He's been at my feet this whole time. So, you know, if that's what's at your feet, there's going to be dog hair on your clothes, especially this time of year. If you have a great peer or a great peer mix, uh, you know this is when they blow their fur. So there's lots of hair. All right, here's our pile. Some of this is stuff that is literally worn out. Some of it will be donated. Um, I don't generally sell my clothes. Um, I do tend to donate them more than I sell them. Um, there are a few designer pieces in there that I may consider selling. Uh, but yeah, this is our pile of things that no longer are gonna live in my closet. And I just, you know, you just gotta be honest. You gotta be honest about what you're not gonna wear. And even though I have the space that I could easily keep all this in here, it clutters my mind. It keeps me from wearing the pieces that I really love. And it's just a good idea. If you don't wear it, if you don't love it, it's okay to admit that you made a mistake. It's okay to admit that you bought something that you never actually wear and just release it. And then have your closet be filled with things that really, really make you happy. And I'm just gonna say like a couple more things on that because I really feel like that's a place where I get stuck when I'm trying to clean out. And it's when I have spent hard earned money on something thinking that I would love it and I just don't. And I like beat myself up and I feel like I can't release the item because I paid good money for it. And I'm only punishing myself. It's like I'm doing penance for poor shopping choices instead of releasing the item, figuring out what I don't love about it so that, you know, the lesson can be, what can I learn so that next time I go shopping, I can make a different choice. Um, and then just really like accepting that if something isn't serving me, I can release it. It's okay if it served me once and now it doesn't. It doesn't mean the thing is bad. It doesn't mean I'm bad. It just means that I've evolved and it's time to move on. And I feel like I struggle with that concept, not just with clothes, but with friendships, with furniture, with a whole bunch of things that I tend to hang on to well after it is time to release them and let them go. So today you can apply that to your clothes or you can apply it to any other area of your life. But just because you paid a lot of money for something, if it isn't serving you anymore, release it and let it go. Did just find this blouse, which is one of my favorite things in my wardrobe. And it's beautiful for spring. It's from Draper James. Um, again, this is one of those pieces that I paid a lot of money for and it's 100% silk and I really feel pretty when I wear it. And guess what? It has blue, but it also has green. So it's going in the rotation for spring because it is definitely time for this to get some love. It's so beautiful and I don't, when I first got it, I wore it all the time and I haven't worn it in probably a year, but it doesn't mean that I don't love it because I do, I just kind of forgot I had it. So it's going in the spring rotation. Oh, that's a lovely view of my toilet. It's my toilet, everyone. <laughs> we'll just let that go. Um, Cause I'm not gonna get up off the floor. <laughs> Y'all know that we have a toilet and now it is in shot. That's one of the dumbest things that I do as a YouTuber. I do a lot of dumb, th dumb things as a YouTuber, but like reshooting a video because you can see like that I have a toilet is just dumb. This is another one of my March favorites. I got this at Costco. So, um, I will see, I will link where I, I will see if they have it online at Costco. You know how Costco is sometimes things that are in the store are not online and sometimes they are, but I'll see if I can find it in another place as well. This has 10,000, whatever it is, megahertz or whatever, so that it will charge. I think it will charge my phone like four or five full charges in here and it holds a charge for a really, really long time, like a long, long time, hours and maybe even days. I don't remember, but um, I'll see if I can find better specifications than that because it was what was written on the packaging. 
Here's why I got it. Number one, the, the external battery that I currently have, a little power bank that I currently have, requires a, a brick and a charger to charge it. And again, I'm trying to simplify my traveling as much as possible. This one just plugs right into the wall, okay? So I don't need to worry about having an additional brick or an additional charger. And all of this is kind of leading up to my Japan trip, my Greece trip that's coming up, even more traveling than normal. So I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible because I'm hoping to do carry-on only for nine days in Japan. We'll see. I don't know if that's going to work, but we're going to try. So this plugs right into the wall. Then it has a USB-C and a lightning cable. I don't know if you guys have heard the rumors that are probably true because there was something about the EU and suing Apple that the iPhone 15s are going to be USB-C, not lightning. So I knew that if I bought a new power bank, I wanted to make sure that it had USB-C as an option. Here's why this is great, because there's no extra cord needed. So all I need is this. I don't need a charging cable. I don't need a brick or anything to charge this. This is literally self-contained and all I need. So you guys know how I feel about stuff like that. I want, so essentially to charge literally every device that I have, every single one, okay? Oops, I put that in the wrong one. I wondered why that wasn't fitting right to charge every single device I have. Are you guys ready for travel? All I need in the whole world is this, and this is what will charge my phone on the go. This will hold everything that I need in case my phone runs out of juice, and this, which is the Mophie 3-in-1 charger. Now, the Mophie 3-in-1 charger does come with a brick and the cord, but I love that it all fits in here so nicely. And I'll show this to you guys one more time in case, I don't know where you've been if you haven't seen this, but this is for my AirPods. This is for my um, uh, phone and this pops up and is for my Apple Watch. And so when I travel, this is all I take. So now literally all I have to take, like I don't have to take a lightning cable at all. I still will because like when I'm on the airplane or whatever, I think that would still be the most convenient. So I'll probably bring a lightning cable, but these two pieces, that is it. That is all I need to charge all of my electronics and everything that I'll need on my trip. So crazy, crazy. When I think about what I used to have to travel with, with electronics and that this is all I have to take now. And again, these would fall under that mission critical piece that I talked about. If I don't have these, these are not things that would be easily for me, um, would be easily accessible in my destination. I mean, I probably could get a power bank and a cord, especially in Tokyo, um, but they're going to be expensive and this way I'm, I'm good to go. So it makes me really happy. Okay. It is several hours later. I just got off an amazing phone call with my graphic designer so I have an e-course in development that I am super excited about and super nervous to talk about. <laughs> so I'm not quite ready to release any details yet, but this was an initial phone call with her. Jackie is also um, just a very loyal viewer, supporter of the channel, amazing human being. And so running the idea by her and, and I needed that today. I ran the idea by her for the e-course itself, which depending on the day you ask me, it's either never going to happen or it's the best idea ever, which I find with most people that are creatives and entrepreneurial, this is how we feel all the time. Especially right now when I have low energy, when I'm just not feeling great, I was like, how am I ever gonna have the time or the energy to get this thing done? And I just kind of chatted with her about my idea about what I want it to be about and her enthusiasm and her like, you've already made your first sale. Like, I can't wait for this to be done. I can't wait to go through it. I can't wait to buy it. It was just the, the, the burst of confidence that I needed. And I think it's really, it's a good point. It is Women's History Month. We had International Women's Day was just a couple days ago. When women support women like that, it, it really, makes such a big difference. Her encouragement of the work that I do, the way that she was able to say, this is needed, I need this, please do this, please start writing, please get it done. And then to partner with her to make it beautiful and to get like the vision out of my head into what I want it to look like with branding and, and there's actually gonna be a workbook component and all of that. 
it just it just did my heart a lot of good so anyway i hope that you have amazing colleagues in your life um, people that are professionals that you work with but who can also be an encouragement like that because on a day like today when i feel lousy when i'm not sure how i'm either even going to have the time and the energy to do my normal work that was such um, a, just a boost of of just confidence for me so anyway that was a good phone call okay lenny should we consider going outside for a little while have some outside time yeah i agree with you i think that's a good idea so my landscaper was here and if you guys have been following the channel for a while last year we did this part of our yard so we kind of had to um, i joked that we spent ten thousand dollars on dirt because there's a creek down there and our yard was basically eroding down the hill so they had to build this three foot retention wall brought in a ton of dirt we actually created this lovely little fire pit area which i'm really happy with but when they did that we knew we wanted to add eventually some more color out here because i mean when the trees are filled this is very very green but we don't have a lot of other colors so um he came by today and i'm interested to see what he's going to come up with i did tell him i want some hydrangeas which grow really really well in atlanta so that's going to happen and he's got some orange markings if you can see over there and then he's got some more markings over here and let's go down and see what we've got going on over here. It looks like some more markings here. So I'm excited to see what his proposition is. Oh, and there's another one over there. So yeah, I think it's going to be really pretty when all is said and done. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel and that type of thing is interesting to you, then yeah, because I have no idea. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that little gate right there. This makes me so happy back here. And also Scooby. Scooby! It's your baby. Good boy. It is right now about 3.30. I was able to get far more done today than I would have thought with my current energy levels. And I really thank you guys for that because filming just kind of, it is that body doubling for me. It really does help me work through the things I need to get done. Um, so thank you for that. But I'm starting to get that feeling like my eyes are just about ready to close. So I am going to go take a little bit of a rest. Um, it's Friday. Um, one of my sons is coming over. We're having pizza for dinner. If y'all have wondered like where Scott's been, I normally only do day in the life videos when he is on a trip because generally when he's home, I like to hang out with him. Uh, so he he actually did a baseball charter. Uh, he flies for Delta Airlines, but they did a, a baseball charter for a Kansas uh, college baseball team, which I thought was kind of fun. Uh, and he will be home tomorrow. So whatever you're doing today, I hope you're finding joy. I hope you enjoyed um, the day with me. It was a lot, but I did feel like it was good for me to get through at least a little bit of a to-do list. And um, yeah, it was great having you along for the ride. So yeah, I will see you in the next video. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give the video a big thumbs up and I'll see you next time.